Hey guys, so Blaze got some buffs today, and I want to talk about fundamentally what engaging is and why it's a significant buff. Oh yeah, you can tell. So, I have a friend of mine helping out, Cascon, and so I'm gonna I'm just gonna E at you without the slow, right? So I'm in vision range. I'm gonna E at him. He doesn't quite get the knockback, but if he did, Cascon is an EU player. If he'd had lower ping, he could have queued me. We can reset cooldowns, and I'll just do it I'm again. Still going. I'm going to do it in three, two, one. Apparently, cast one's just bad. Let's try that again. <laughs> three, two, one. And so there's some there's some counterplay to the engage, right? On lower ping, if he were paying attention and saving that cooldown exclusively for that, he would be able to counterplay my engage. Now, here's the second part. Uh, the reason basically has a wind up. So if he's on low ping and I and he knows I'm going up three, I just want you to sidestep it, like step back or step to the side, uh, either one. Three, yeah. two, one, and he just walks out of the way. So this is why Blaze for a long time was not considered a main tank. Now, now, however, the change that Blizzard has made is the following: they have made the slow on oil spill larger, and they haven't uh, nerfed the oil dispersal talent that increases the area and the effective slow. So if I oil him, three, two, one, oil, and then he, oh, damn it, he missed. He missed it, though. Oh, no. that, that was max rage. That was probably a little bit greedy on my part. So three, two, one, and you do them together, the slow actually makes it so that trick of sidestepping doesn't work. He can still counterplay with the knockback, but he can't counterplay by actually dodging the W. This gives Blaze, if you use these two combinations together at the right angle and the right distance, uh, it a limited counterplay engage, which is what a tank fundamentally needs to be good. And we're just gonna do a couple other quick examples so I can show you guys uh, why other heroes that are also considered tanks actually have limited counterplay in the same way. So once again, guys, we're gonna we're gonna show you the way you can get. So Diablo's engage is very reliant on him hitting his Q. He doesn't necessarily even have to hit it into a wall, but we're gonna do three, two, one. Did not Q me. Okay. I need to do it when you say two because three, is pinged as well. two, one. All right. So again, limited engage potential. You can see even when he's trying to do it on low enough ping, and I think that's the critical. Uh, thing that Blizzard needs in particular to understand because I've thought about this in the past. I think a lot of their testers are local and so they're always exclusively playing on, pl on low ping. So they, they often give tanks like a lot of counterplay or here as they intend to be tanks, a lot of counterplay on low ping environments and don't think about how on average that's not going to be the situation. But even when talking about competitive, you have to assume, uh, you know, Korea at the highest level of execution. So three, two, one go and then there's the there's the disengage so a lot of heroes have a lot of tanks have specific cooldowns uh from other heroes that limit their counterplay but if you play around that cooldown or you just get the angle or you get a vision advantage you can just no counterplay there that that engage is going to happen no matter what the rainer does unless he hits that q so we'll do another example let's do uh, a new brack next okay. So now we're going to show you the way it works uh, with a Nubarak in terms of having counterplay. Now, Nubarak does not have any counterplay for his engage. His The speed of his E is fast enough that, especially if he does it from out of vision, uh, you're, you're not going to be able to sidestep. You're not going to be able to dodge. Maybe you can blink. Uh, maybe you can dash. But for the most part, a Nubarak does not have any uh, counterplay to his engage. The major counterplay to a Nubarak is that he himself is very squishy. So if he E's in, He's committed and he doesn't have any way to get back out. So I'm just going to E on to uh, Cask on here. And then that combo is just guaranteed to hit. It's going to hit 100% of the time. But he kills me. He auto attacks me instead of my beetles. Um, he'll just kill me pretty quickly. Auto attackers, look at that. Mine just melting. Right? So imagine that as the entire enemy team. If I engage on one target and the entire enemy team just turns and focuses me, I can W, but in like one and a half, two seconds, I'm gonna be 100% dead, but I have unstoppable main. So there's there's risk versus reward there. There's some counterplay. A lot of high level Nubrak players will actually do this. They'll wait till they see someone like out of position a little bit and they'll be like, is my team in range? Oh, okay, I'm gonna Q. Oh, my Q missed, I'm not gonna go. They'll Q and then E 
right? So they guarantee the reliability. But in terms of engage range and engage reliability, Anubarak is the best tank in the game because his E is literally unstoppable. And the animation for it is fast enough that it has very little counterplay. You're just, that's not going to miss. It's just never going to miss unless the Anubarak himself makes a mistake. And then he dies, which is the consequence. So Anubarak has a very, very strong engage, but has a specific downside to balance the strength of that engage. And the next one, Murden. Murden's a really interesting case because if you look at it carefully at his animation, there's a significant delay on the queue that actually gives people a lot of time to counterplay, again, especially on the ping. This is, by the way, one of the reasons that the Marauder Murden skin is banned. Because the Marauder Murden skin, the animation does not always let you know where the Q is heading, and the animation's a little bit faster, it feels like at least. Looking at it, that's why it's not allowed in pro play. But Murden has a lot of different ways of comboing his abilities that allow him to engage. The, the, the hardest one, by far, is the max range jump Q. So basically, you are in a situation where you know where the opponent is. I know Cascon is right there. I'm going to jump and Q. Right, that's that's the hard one. That is very hard to react to, but you have to know in advance exactly where they are because you can't like jump in and then be like, where are they? Where are they? Oh, I'm going to queue them because they'll sidestep. They'll instantly start moving away. The next one uh, is much, much, much more reliable. And what you do is you get in a position where you have vision of them, but you can jump onto them. So you go for this. You get the slow from the W, and look how he's slowed now. And he actually completely juke me on high ping because you know, he's beast stepping me. Feels bad. But <laughs> but the point is that if you get on top of someone and slow them, you can actually reliably get the stun while they're slowed because they can't sidestep in time. As long as you're aiming for the center of their hitbox and they're slowed by your W, it's 100% of the time going to hit, assuming you're not bad. Which apparently I haven't played Murder in, in like a long time and I suck. But point is, in terms of the reliability of the engage, it's quite quite there. There you go. You got it that time. So Muradin has a very reliable engage, but he has to combo multiple abilities together, and in all cases, he has to take the same risk that Anubarak does of using his jump, because he can't reliably engage with just his Q unless he has prior knowledge of where the enemy is and then has vision control. This is comparable uh, to Garrosh, where people have to walk up to him, or Garrosh has to sort of hit a short-range stun. Garrosh has a very short cooldown on his Q, though, especially with the level 1 quest, so he can do what's called fishing for engages uh, consistently, whereas every other mobility tank has to control space and control vision uh, a little bit more. But once you've done that step, once you've gotten to the point where you reliably have the vision control and you know where the enemy is, uh, Muradin's engage is fairly reliable, again, especially on low ping, because you can jump in and just go. Next one. This one's kind of awkward. Uh, if people just walk up to you as Johanna, you have a reliable engage with WQ. Like if someone's just in condemn range, you can... I don't know why he was physically behind me. Um, but it, you, have, you, have, you have that engage option. But in terms of reliable engages, especially at... Again, low ping, pro level. Jana's only reliable engages are her heroics. So she had Blessed Shield. Blessed Shield is a huge hitbox. Look how wide that is. And you're literally just going to look for someone and then condemn them. Right? It's going to bounce to three people. If they're all sitting too close to each other, you're going to be able to get a fairly reliable engage off of Johanna. That's a good enough engage. It's on a 60 second cooldown, especially because in the interim, Johanna can do a lot of clearing wave. She's not good at warding, particularly. Uh, because she doesn't have a huge safety margin, but she can engage for her team from 10 onwards. And pre-10, she just clears waves and helps you get to 10, so it's strong enabling for herself. Very limited kind of play. Even her other heroic. We'll, uh, we'll reset talents here. Choose. Which a lot of people think of as a total meme Choose. that is unpickably bad. Is not a bad engage. If you know where the, uh, the opponent is, let's say that... Let's pretend that, you know, Cascon is just clearing bottom. Which is not something unusual to be doing, to be honest, to have someone in lane clearing. And you're just like, I'm over the wall, and I'm going to go on him. The animation is fast enough in terms of the way it moves, and you get the micro stun, that you can land on them and get the WQ. If your damage is in range, that slow, 
And the fact that you can gap, use it as a gap closer is enough to be a reliable engage. Both of Johanna's hero heroics are fairly reliable engages. She doesn't have one outside of that. Her base kit, it's not reliable, even though it will sometimes work. But she has options that give it to her. So here's kind of a weird one that's uh, unique to the NA meta. And I think we need to explain something basic about vision control when we're talking about Zul. Uh, as a tank who has an engage. If you clear waves faster than the enemy team does, your wave continues to live and gives you vision as it pushes up a lane. This means that on rotation, the enemy team has to be split, whereas your four man can pretty much always stay together, Zul, two supports, and whoever your, your fourth is. If you split, you're only doing camp, something like that. So you always have the ability to start out mounted with a vision advantage if you're playing the Zul tank comfortably. You can just walk up to anyone, but you'll find windows where you can walk up to someone and then just click E on them. So this is the, it's point and click. It's range three, so it's not like super convenient. The The warm up actually gives your team a warning that the CC is about to happen, which is nice. Whereas a lot of the other engages we've had have been instant if your team's not 100% on point. So tank Zool is actually easier to play in some ways uh, for the engage. You just walk up, you catch them out of position. Even with the knockback, like you're gonna be able to catch up and your damage certainly will be able to catch up because they generally have um, a little bit more ability, and you're going to eat the knockback in this case for them. We're using Rainer as an example of this, by the way, because Rainer has the easiest counterplay. I would argue that displacements in general right now in the game are the best counterplay to all engages. Uh, more so, it used to be like slows are really good at it, but displacements have sort of eclipsed it with uh, the increased mobility. Zul also has a fairly reliable engage heroic, uh, believe it or not, from level 10 onwards. So let's just set team level. <coughs> Choose a and I'm probably going to one-shot Cascon because he's not level 10, talent. but that's fine. Ah, that seems generous. <laughs> and it's actually... Uh, no, I don't. It's actually engage. It's actually uh, uh, skeletons. So let's say that you're, you know, someone's a decent distance away from you, their auto-attack range away from you, and you just skeletons behind them. They're now slow, and you can walk up to them. This is, again, fairly reliable. So we're not saying, or at least I'm not saying, that you absolutely need hard CC for an engage to be reliable. Uh, ranged slows can actually be quite a reliable engage, as long as there's some kind of way to follow it up with a hard CC. Blaze and now Zul are both really good examples of this. But fundamentally, a tank needs to be able to engage for his team with limited counterplay from the enemy team being possible, even in a low ping environment. So animation speed uh, matters quite a bit. The reason that Blaze's engage is so questionable is because of the warm-up that makes it so incredibly telegraphed. But with the slow, it's going to hit unless they have a knockback. But even in his current incarnation, Blaze's engage is somewhat limited by the, the telegraphed aspect of it. You can't sidestep it anymore with the slow buff, which is a, a net buff to how reliable his engages, but the fact that you can still knock it back and draft around it uh, makes him questionable as a tank. And, you know, maybe maybe he'll be strong enough. Maybe the the absence of knockbacks, maybe you just ban Rainer. There's not that many knockbacks, that many stuns, that many reliable uh, ways to counterplay it on a lot of heroes in the game. But that's sort of what a tank fundamentally needs. Technically, a tank needs to also be able to survive doing this, which is why you see Zul run with double support and not just by himself. Because uh, if you could run Zul as just an ordinary tank with the amount of wave clear he has it and not having him double support, it would be really, really strong and it would be more common than it is. So tanks need to be able to engage, limited counterplay for the team, and they need to be able to survive engaging for their team. And if Blizzard wants to push Blaze in the main tank role, that's the main thing they need to consider. The patch, the changes in the past couple patches have been good. Um, even the cooldown reduction on E gives him more engages per per minute or more engage more engage opportunities even if they do see some counterplay uh the fact that his cooldown is shorter is actually a fairly large advantage because if your cooldowns are shorter than the counterplay to your engage you could get knocked back be like that's fine i'll be back in nine seconds and your cooldown is like 12 i don't have the cooldown what's the cooldown on rainer's q it's actually eight seconds isn't it it's 10 it's 10 baseline so there you go uh, potentially blaze could out cooldown economy a rainer on his engage so something to think about, uh, if you guys actually really like this video, I would be happy to do a video like this that's like explaining how to engage for each individual tank. 
because I don't think I've ever done that before in video form. And doing this right now, it occurs to me that seeing it might be more beneficial for a lot of people than reading it. And I have done written guides for how to engage each tank, but not a visual one. So if that's something you're interested in, comment uh, down below. Let me know. And thanks for watching.